Program number 86, 3, 2, 1. Here's Info presents a three-part series this week, Cattle in the Mud, and in the freezing rains from Texas to Canada in the miserable spring of 1983. The struggle of animals to survive the rough winters of the Western Plains and the Upper Midwest are legendary. But this spring of 1983 is worse than in recent memory. We'll hear from Jack Cruz of Here's Info and Jim Flannery of the Omaha World Herald. Today it's Cruz with Norvell Hauk, Adams County, Iowa cow-calf operator who also feeds a thousand cattle for market. I'm standing uh, very close to uh, mud, uh, to two dead animals uh, covered with mud. Uh, Norvell, uh, how long has it been since you've seen a year similar to this one? I've never seen one like it. We've lost 20% as of this morning. But some of these big, huge tractors have mud clear to the top of them. Well, Jack, we've got every piece of equipment that anybody could want. We've got a bulldozer to bulldoze the mud, after, uh, but it can only be done so much. We've got two all-terrain vehicles like I'm sitting on here that we can get out to the cows and calves, and we've got as much know-how as anybody has, and you just can't uh, get things going when it snows and rains every other day. You know? Our cost to gain in the feedlots of the cattle we have on feed ha has jumped tremendously this winter. We've got cattle that just uh, the last month hasn't gained a pound, and they just stand out there. And we we take the bulldozer and we try to get as good a place as we can, but it, it's just muddy all the way down. And uh, the cost of gain is terrible, and uh, the the meat is just not going to be there that it normally would have been. And just as I was leaving, he told me that last week. They had cattle on a hillside uh, about a mile south of here. I can see it from where I'm standing. There was no way to get feed to the livestock. They hired a helicopter to drop hay from the air to those cattle that were more or less marooned in mud. The bankers own him, and they control him, and they know that he holds the highest card. He'll take chances and keep on gambling for one more year down on Daddy's farm. And keep on gambling. The, the words and music are by Jenny Weingardner with Bob Ed Johnson, music teacher for the Corning Daddy Elementary Schools, singing with her own guitar accompaniment. Tomorrow, in the second program in this three-part series, We'll hear Jim Flannery, prize-winning reporter for the Omaha World Herald, as we move west of the wide Missouri. Here's Info presents the second program in a series, Cattle in the Mud, and the Freezing Rains from Texas to Canada in the miserable spring of 1983. It isn't just the economics of cattle losses in the wet and freezing and soggy spring of 83. It's the profoundly human story of the ranchers and the farmers in their unrelenting struggle to keep living things alive. When we saw the prize-winning reporter James Allen Flannery's byline stories in the Omaha World Herald about cattle losses, we asked him to tell us by phone not the profit and loss disaster told in his reports, but the compassionate side. Well, I think the best uh, way you can gauge that is to go to a rendering plant, and it is a pitiful sight to see not only dead calves, but dead cows brought in in numbers that the operator of that plant has not seen before. They are encrusted in mud. I saw one cow that still had hay in its mouth. Especially the calves are damp to the bone. They, they uh, can't dry out. And the calves uh, are reluctant to nurse on many cows because the cows themselves have udders that are soaked or coated in mud, and the cows themselves are sick. A kind of a bacteria problem when 
the cow's udder is coated with mud, isn't there? Right. It is in the estimation of veterinarians and uh, longtime livestock producers in the area that this is one of the worst uh, situations facing the industry. I can't tell you the number of veterinarians who've told me that how they are, they and cowboys, that's still a term used in the business, right. are living around the clock with these calves just trying to save their lives. Bankers own him, and they control him, and they know that he holds the highest card. But he'll take chances and keep on gambling for one more year down on Daddy's farm. But he'll keep on gambling. The words and music are by Jenny Weingardner with Bobette Johnson, music teacher for the Corning Elementary School, singing with her own guitar accompaniment. Tomorrow, in the third program in this series, we'll hear from Jack Cruz again with reports from muddy feedlots. To a Midwest family He's the only one And the only son To care Number 88, 3, 2, 1. Here's Info presents the third program in a series, Cattle in the Mud, and the freezing rains from Texas to Canada in the miserable spring of 1983. <laughs> In this third program, we go to Jack Cruz again. He interviewed two feeders, one who is combating the mud in the old-fashioned way, and one who points out that the feed value of last year's corn is just not there. And now to Jack Cruz at the farm of Lester Anderson at Stanton, Iowa. Lester feeds 800 cattle. Would you kind of tell us some of the problems you've had in the last uh, six weeks or so with this mud? It's continuous mud all the time. A lot of them are belly deep. We have a good team of Belgian horses that we drive when the tractors get stuck. Are your cattle putting on the weight that you No, expected? I don't think they're even holding their own. The packers don't care to buy any of these cattle with all the mud on them. How many pounds of mud would you say each critter had on them? Those that aren't too bad probably have 25, 30 pounds. But some of them are worse than that. Well, I've heard them say they had 80 pounds. The other muddy scene Jack Cruz visited is on the Ray Vols farm near Malvern. They stood by a truck unloading corn. We're standing right next to a feedlot that's got uh, mud about hip deep in it. Would you say the conditions are of this spring compared to normal, Ray? Well, I don't know as I've ever seen anything quite this bad. This one lot, no, they're probably six weeks to two months behind on where they should be at the time. And they just don't seem to be gaining, is that right? Well, it's it's the mud, and then I think it's a little bit of the corn, too. The corn quality last year was well, is near what it usually is. Some of them are changing their feed ration to give them more energy. There again, that's another expense to the cattle feeder. The bankers own him, and they control him, and they know that he holds the highest card. He'll take chances and keep on gambling for one more year down on Daddy's farm. But he'll keep on gambling. The, the words and music by Jenny Weingardner, with Bobette Johnson, music teacher for the Corning Elementary School, singing with her own guitar accompaniment. This was a three-part series on cattle losses in the muddy, wet, and miserable spring of 1983. Phil Allen for Here's Info, and that for today is something to think about. He's the 